Hello, my name is Bao Facto. I'm a senior technical support analyst at BMC Software. Today's webinar will cover setting up the business services view using a simple business service model. We'll first present why the business services view can be helpful in your capacity planning. Then you'll see the steps in setting up the business services view, detailed instructions on how to do it, and a short demonstration on these steps. Finally, we'll look at common issues and how to resolve them. The business services view provides a consolidated summary of all business services in your infrastructure. You can drill down into specific business services and view the associated applications, business drivers, service pools, and deployment details. This information helps you analyze the capacity at the service pool or deployment level. Let's explore these new terms. A business service is any value added service that is delivered to customers. Sometimes a business service consists entirely of an IT service, such as an e-commerce website or delivering goods to customers. A service pool is a group of resources that form an infrastructure or technology layer, also known as tier, within an application or a business service. A server is a virtual machine or standalone system from a list of supported technologies. A business driver represents the user's behavior in your business and selecting the most appropriate business driver is key to the capacity planning process. As this is an optional element to the view, it will not be covered in this webinar. There are seven steps in configuring a simple business service view. In the next slides, we'll go over each step in greater detail. Then I'll show you how it's done in the BHCO UI. My company provides information about airplane engines. Customers can read short articles on the website or get large books shipped to them using the Alexandria document loan application. In my lab system, I have imported VMware virtual machines. The screenshot shows one such system and the entity type is virtual machine dash VMware. For the other supported technologies, the entity type will either be virtual machine dash a technology name or pod workload for Kubernetes or generic for the standalone system. The first screenshot shows the building server's entity type. Specific metrics are required for the business services view to work. If some metrics are missing, the service pool generated from the servers will not have its metrics calculated. Furthermore, these metrics must be global, meaning they do not have sub-resource. The second screenshot shows the CPU util metric has no sub-resource. I then imported hierarchy information from a CMDB to create a business service tree in the workspace. The screenshot shows two business services in the BSV webinar domain. The first business service is for the book checkout application. And the second business service is for the website where you can read short articles on airplane engines. Note the second business service doesn't have an application. The servers for each business service are also organized based on CMDB data. The next step is to add tags to your business servers, applications, and optionally servers. You can create them manually using the UI, but it's recommended to use a CSV ETL to import them. For the business service, I tagged on importance and instance. For the application, I tagged on importance. For the servers that belong to the application, I did not tag any of them. For the servers that belong to the website, 
I tagged on importance. Tagging the servers or not will reflect on how the service pools are named. Next, deploy the business service view in the administration, system, maintenance, additional packages page. To edit the view's permission, navigate to the views and then manage views page. Find the business services view in the list and use the menu to select edit access rights. Then select the user groups to grant access to the business services view. This step will create the service pools in the workspace. The service pool name will either be from the parent application if the servers are not tagged, or from the parent business service if the server's tag type matches the business service tag type. In step four, I have tagged the article's website servers with the importance tag type, so it is selected here. This page determines which business services will show up in the business services view main page based on the tag type selected. Now, let me show you what I did in all these steps. In my lab system, I've created a subdomain to hold my two business services. Then I imported the VMware server data as well as CMDB hierarchy data to build the two business services. The first business service is for the Alexandria document loan application. As you can see, I have the business service here. Then I have my application, which is composed of multiple systems. Looking at the billing system, we can see that the entity type is virtual machine VMware, which is one of the supported technologies. The second business service is the articles web server. This is where customers can read short articles about airplane engines. This business service does not have an application. It is just composed of systems. Now for the tagging. Tagging the business services is mandatory. And so for the Alexandria business service, I am going to create a tag and I'm going to select the importance tag type. As this is where the company makes all the money, this business service is considered high value. Then I can tag the application if I want, and I can also tag the systems that belong to the business service. However, in this case, I will not tag these systems and we will see what happens to the service pool names when they get created. For the second business service, I've already tagged the business service as well as all the systems belonging to the business service. As this is a free website, the importance of these servers are not as high. So I have assigned them a value of medium. To grant access to the view, head to the Manage Views page, look for the business service view, then use the menu to select Edit Access Rights. Then select the user groups that you want to have access to this view. The next step is to configure the business services view. As this is a new environment, 
I need to click here to go to the configuration pages. The first page, which has to do with service pool creation, I need to select the domain where my business services reside. I select the domain, see that it appears on the right side, and click on Apply. My business's services are already tagged, and they are tagged with the tag type of importance. As such, I need to select the important tag type here so that the service pool will get created and will adopt the server's tag type if they exist. In the second page of the configuration, I need to configure the tag type so that my business services appear on the view's main page. As my business services are tagged with the type importance, I select it here. Then optionally, I can rename the tag type string to a different value as we will see in the business services view when it's complete. Apply the changes and go back to the workspace to see that the service pools are created properly. After a few minutes, I head back to the workspace to see that under my two business services, I have service pools that are created. As I have not tagged any of the systems for the Alexandria application, the name of the service pool is simply the name of the parent application, which is Alexandria application underscore pool. Because I have tagged the servers for the articles web server, the name of the service pool is then the value of the tags for the servers. As all of these servers were tagged with the value of medium, then the service pool that contains them have the name medium underscore pool. Before going to the business services view to see the data, I need to make sure that the service pools metrics are created properly. I need to see configuration metrics, performance metrics, and indicators. The indicator metrics are not calculated yet because I have just created the service pools using the business services view configuration. Let's wait a bit until the indicators metrics are calculated. After a short time, we see that the indicator metrics for the service pool have been generated. This completes the configuration of the business services view. Our business services view is now set up and it's time to use it. The screenshot shows the two business services I've created, the Alexandria Document Loan Business Service and the Oracle's website business service. The status of the business services show no saturation on resources, but the risk pie chart shows a potential problem to come based on the data collected. Let's examine this in the UI. To navigate to the business service view, we click on views at the top and then we click on the menu on the left and choose business services. As I have added this as my landing page, the business services overview shows up right away. As I've said, the two business services are shown here based on their severity. I know that based on my tagging, the Alexandria document loan business service is tagged as high. And so that's a circle that you see up here whereas the 
article's website business service is tagged as medium, and that's the second circle here. Because the circles are green, it seems that there's nothing to worry about. However, in a typical workflow, if you have multiple business services show up on this chart, you want to look at the business service that are rated higher in severity, and then look at any of the business services that shows a color other than green. Now, in the pie chart below, it shows that there's a risk for a potential problem somewhere in these two business services. And so I can either drill down into each business service and go see where the problem could be happening, or I can just click on the red portion of the pie chart in order to drill down to where the problem could be. So let's do that. Now, I see that based on the two business services data I have, it is the Alexandria Document Loan Business Service that has a risk in its service pool that could lead to saturation in the future. In order to drill down further, I click on the red icon that you see here. Here is a screen that shows a summary of the service pool details for the Alexandria application. On the left side, we see the usage based on the last two weeks of data collected. And on the right-hand side, we see the prediction from the system that there could be a CPU saturation in the future and there could be a memory saturation in the future. The length of the bar for the risk indicator is simply the maximum value of any of these risk indicators. Now we know that there's a risk on both CPU and memory for the entire service pool. So let's click on the service tab to see exactly which server is affected and which resources are affected. In this view, I see that the Alexandria application contains five servers and the first server named profile has a potential issue and the last server named billing has a potential issue. So expanding the server details for both of these servers shows me that the CPU risk is coming for in the profile server, whereas the memory risk is coming from the billing server. And that's why at the service pool summary level, we see both CPU risk and memory risk. In order to know more about why the system is showing that there is a CPU risk, we see here already that based on the last two weeks of collected data, the CPU usage has been pretty high. So let's click into this server and see in details the charts for all the resource usage. And here we see that there was a large spike of CPU near 100% in the last two weeks. And based on this data, based on the threshold that is configured in the business services view, the system is predicting that there can be a risk for CPU for this system. And consequently, there is a risk for CPU usage for the service pool in general. Looking at the other system where there's a risk for memory, we see that in the last two weeks, the memory usage is pretty much pegged close to 100%. And because of this, and because of the thresholds configured in the business services view, the system is telling you that there could be a potential problem for this system, and it will, of course, affect the service pool that this system belongs to. And this is how you can use the business services view to see the current resource usage, but also the potential risk for saturation on these resources. Here are common issues with the business services view. If the business services view is not displaying data, it's typically because the requirements are not met. Consult the knowledge articles number 000409276 
which includes some of the screenshots from this webinar. In addition, there are new lessons learned from customer cases on this topic. When you create your business services, create a subdomain first to hold them. Otherwise, the business services view cannot display the data for these business services. This will be improved in the future. The business services view data is based on data marts. As such, verify that the data mart materializer system tasks had executed without errors. If only some of the elements of the view are missing, check the data marts are populated. The data marts supporting the view have the word business in their description. Use unique tag values for servers such as app one underscore high instead of just high as in this webinar's example. The service pool created from these tag servers will have the tag value in the name. So you don't want to have multiple service pools with the same name in the view. If the business service tree was modified but the view does not reflect the changes, you may need to manually run the data mart materializer system task. The indicator metrics must be up to date. If you have recently updated your metrics, but the indicator metrics were calculated only yesterday or several days ago, the business services view will display incorrect data. There is a best FAQ on the business services view. You can find it in the knowledge article 0004094164. You can consult this documentation page to get a better understanding of the concepts mentioned in the webinar. Finally, if you are interested in creating your own data set and creating your own ETL to import both server and business models data, please consult this YouTube video. In today's webinar, I presented the following. The business service feature offers a powerful view into your infrastructure resource grouped by the service used by your customer. Then we went over the steps needed to configure and validate the business service workspace tree and the business services view. Finally, we looked at common issues and how to resolve them. There will be a Ask the Expert session coming up on June 13, 2023 at 10 a.m. Eastern Time Zone. It will cover both true site capacity optimization and BMC Helix continuous optimization. Hope to see you there. Thank you for joining this webinar.